Newcastle are going to have to be very, very shrewd and very clever this summer. And they're going to start with a couple of potential free transfers. Hello everyone, welcome back to Newcastle Fans TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't yet subscribed, what are you playing at? Hit that subscribe button below and smash the like button as always. Today I'm going to be looking at a couple of the heavily linked defenders uh, that have, as I say, been heavily linked to Newcastle United for this summer. Both available on free transfers. So whatever you say, they're looking at sensible business so we can really spend the uh, remaining money that we can. Thank you, FFFP. And yes, the extra F does stand for, yeah, and PSR. So the money we can spend elsewhere on the more sexier positions, if you will, uh, right wing and uh, the attacking position. There's maybe even another centre mid, who knows. But the two centre backs that we've been linked with on freeze are Lloyd Kelly of Bournemouth and Tosin of Fulham. Now, uh, one of these two uh, excites me greatly um, for both, let's face it, would be squad players. When, when everyone is finally fit, should that ever happen again? Um, I think we'll all agree our, our first choice centre backs are still Sven Botman and Fabian Scher. Fabian Scher, of course, um, is I don't I don't want to say it, but he's getting on a little bit now. Um, next season um, may well be his last in a black and white shirt. Of course, he is out of contract at the end of next season, signing that extension um, earlier uh, this year. Um, so we have maybe got one eye on on the future perhaps but uh, let's take a look at these so Lloyd Kelly and Tosin uh, both what you wouldn't call young promising centre backs they're, they're more their age represents the here and now Lloyd Kelly um, one year younger than Tosin um, Lloyd Kelly's 25 Tosin is 26 um, when Lloyd Kelly was first mentioned I could imagine there was a few Newcastle fans out there rolling their eyes and going ugh Bournemouth again, um, which, which, which I get, and I don't necessarily disagree with you on that point. Um, Lloyd Kelly is the one, really, more of a kind of Dan Byrne mould, has been filling in on the left-hand side of, of defence this season for Bournemouth. Tosin, out and out, centre-half, um, tall, very tall, and um, would be a threat from set pieces. Let's, let's take a look at these stats here. Um, this is just based on this season, of course. I haven't gone back too far um, from from the Premier League history. Uh, Tosin, of course, from the Academy of Manchester City, which was kind of like Chelsea back in the day when you remember the, the players that they sold, your De Bruyne, your Salas, and all, and all of those from their kind of reserve slash academy base. Um, Man City, you know, that they were selling really hot prospects to, I suppose, to aid them get around uh, FFP and PSR and whatnot. You know, you just got to look at what Cole Palmer's doing for Chelsea, for crying out loud. Um, but yeah, Toten came from their academy, Manchester born and bred, uh, and, and doing very, very well, uh, putting in a lot of impressive displays uh, for Fulham so far this season. Um, let's take a look at their defending stats. Now, the key stat here is both are actually really positive. No errors leading to goals conceded, which is good. Um, obviously, aerial battles, I mean, toasting gobbles up those long balls for lunch. Um, as I say, massive, big, tall, rangy guy. Uh, and will be a threat from set pieces as well, because we'll have a look at a couple of attacking stats, but I don't want to get too bogged down in attacking stats for, for essentially centre-backs. Um, so the questions you have to ask is, one, are they better than your likes of uh, Dummett? You would probably say at this point, yes, very much so. Lloyd Kelly would be an improvement, a kind of left-sided centre-back can fill in for Dan Byrne. For me, he's not as good as Dan Byrne. Dan Byrne is still um, a better player than Lloyd Kelly. Is Tosin better than, dare I say, Jamal LaSalle's? I think there's definitely more potential there. 
Yes, he's 26, but, you know, LaSalle's wrong side of 30 now. Don't get me wrong, I, and, you know, go back to the history of the channel. I've always been a staunch LaSalle supporter, a big LaSalle's fan, uh, captain this club through thick and thin. He's one of the most important players of the past 10 years in this club's history. From Championship to Champions League, absolutely superb. From standing up um, to that uh, rotten dressing room in the Steve McLaren days, um, leading us back through Rafa and, and yeah, putting up with Steve Bruce, I suppose. And um, is, is very important. I'd still be keeping the cells around, don't get me wrong. Um, but um, the likes of the Deadwood, I suppose, would be the common phrase used um, that needs to be moved on that people are kind of getting itchy feet about. Obviously now with the, the financial constraints, it's impossible to, it's impossible really to, to, to have a massive squad overhaul all at once, like when City got took over, like when Chelsea in particular, when the, the, the first big billionaire uh, foreign money came in, um, you know, you could go out and spend hundreds and hundreds of millions on revamping your old squad. We can't do that. We all know that now. Um, we've had to box clever, which is why there are some players um, still in that squad that that maybe aren't at the level where we're aspiring to be. So this is part of the slow and steady kind of um, tortoise catching the hare um, kind of thing with, with our squad at the moment. And, and you do have to look at these free transfers. I mean, let's just like briefly take a look at these attacking stats. As I said, I don't want to get too bogged down in these. Um, Tosin, as I say, would be a, a, a huge threat from set pieces. Like, um, all right, he's not he's not Fabian Cher. Not many are. Um, and Fabian Cher, you think the goals he's scored, they're either thunder bastards or they're, you know, ridiculous, crazy goals. He, yes, um, he can get up and uh, get his head on the ball, of course, into the net like he did against Spurs the other week. But... I, I, w I would argue he's not synonymous for that. He's synonymous for more worldies. Um, whereas Tosin, target man in the box, whip that ball in, kind of like Burn is at the moment, um, climbing above everyone to, to get his head on the ball from a free kick or a corner. Um, he's a threat. Um, obviously, not as prolific as Fabian Chair, but, you know, no one is. He's just the bargain buy of Premier League history, isn't he? Three million pounds. Oh, absolute steal. Um, but yeah, as, as we've seen this season, injuries are going to show that the squad is going to play more of a part. It has to play more of a part. We can't be reliant on the same old 11 to get us through uh, a season. Um, hopefully, you know, we're still going to be playing European football next year. Um, that's very much now dependent on who wins the FA Cup, really. Um, whether we're going to be... Look, top four is probably gone. The fifth place with the coefficients and whatnot, that's probably going to go to Italy and Germany now with City and Arsenal exiting the Champions League, which, by the way, snaring opposition fans when those Champions League groups came out, we called it the group of death or whatever. Look at, the, look at it now. Look at it now. Um, uh, you know, PSG and Dortmund facing off in the semi-final. One of them is going to be in the final. Uh, AC Milan doing bits in, in the Europa League still and progressing well. Um, hopefully, by the time this video comes out, anyway, or I'll look a bit silly. Well, more silly than normal. Um, yeah, it was the group of death. And that Champions League exit does really knock me a lot more than last season's cup final. I don't know why. Maybe that's just me. Um, I don't expect you to agree with that one. But, yeah, it irritates me greatly seeing... Um, what PSG and Dortmund have got on to do in the Champions League. I, that could have been us, but uh, that's another day. But yeah, let me know your feelings and thoughts on Lloyd Kelly and Tosin. Um, and yes, I have gone through the, the entire video without pronouncing Tosin's surname. You're welcome. Um, that is entirely deliberate. Um, but yeah, Tosin is the one that excites me and I think can have a real part to play in the squad as a whole. Um, Lloyd Kelly doesn't do a lot for me. He's not as good as Dan Byrne, in my opinion. Um, but, of course, he's, he's, he's better than you, your likes of Dummett and, and, and that kind of side of the squad. Um, but, look, it's going to be an exciting summer. I can guarantee you it's going to be a frustrating summer. It's going to be 
a nervy summer. Bruno's release clause is going to be playing on my nerves throughout the whole entire transfer window, believe me. Um, and I don't want clubs sniffing around Alexander Isak either. They're imperative to, to build through that squad and then getting those players back, getting Tonali back is going to be huge as well, by the way. Um, in August, getting him back is going to be massive. Um, can't wait to see what he can now deliver. Um, you know, the, the spine of our squad will be so crucial. Botman get, coming back from ACL and hopefully he can get back to his best because, you know, we've got a serious spine of the team which can challenge anyone at the end of the day. And to get that squad behind them, around them, is going to be huge. So this could be a shrewd move by Newcastle. Don't get me wrong. Um, Tosin, I think, will be a very, very good signing indeed. But if you agree or disagree, let me know in the comments. Uh, hit that like button as, again, as I say again. And uh, let's look forward to a strong end to the season. And uh, hopefully we can cement our place in Europe for next season. So thanks for watching, everyone. Stay tuned to NFTV.